Live everywhere. Uh, there's multiple breaking news, uh, both, uh, I think, pretty historic. I will start with uh, Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, this is a super chat, by the way, so if you want to leave contributions, you can. Thank you, Squirrel Lips, for the dollar ninety nine starting us out. Uh, if you living under a rock, uh, Susan Collins, the moderate uh, senator from Maine, uh, just announced um, that she will be voting for, for uh, Brett Kavanaugh to be confirmed. Uh, and after that, after that, Democrat, Democrat Joe Manchin, uh, up for re-election in West Virginia, who all along, I told you, only cares about his political future, uh, he said he is voting for Brett Kavanaugh. So you have two uh, senators, one a Republican and one a uh, Democrat, which I'm, I'm using the term uh, very loosely, sorry about this, um, saying that they are going to vote for Brett Kavanaugh, which puts Brett Kavanaugh at 51 votes and means he will be confirmed to the Supreme Court. Um, Susan Collins, Susan Collins, who was on the bubble, uh, gave a 50 minute, 50 minute rambling speech uh, on the Senate floor justifying her decision. Uh, it took her, I believe, 22 to 23 minutes before she got to her actual point of why, uh, uh, got to, it took 20 something minutes to get to the actual allegations against uh, Brett Kavanaugh from Christine Ford, as well as Deborah Ramirez. And uh, basically, the first 20 minutes was basically kind of rewriting history and saying why all of the people's um, opposition and concern to Kavanaugh, not based on the assault charge, but based on his actual judicial philosophy, is wrong. So she explained why Judge Kavanaugh won't uh, definitively overturn Roe versus Wade. She explained why Judge Kavanaugh won't definitively be the vote that repeals or overturns uh, pre uh, the Affordable Care Act. She went on to talk about why Brett Kavanaugh wouldn't be uh, decimating uh, labor unions. Uh, everything she talked about, there is countless previous statements by Brett Kavanaugh and reporting that shows he does not see Roe versus Wade as a done legal argument. He thinks it's open to interpretation. Uh, he also doesn't think that the president of the United States can be prosecuted, which Susan Collins apparently has an alternative interpretation of statements that he has made. So getting away from what she said about his judicial philosophy, then she got into uh, the allegation by Christine Ford, as well as Deborah Ramirez. Uh, what she basically said, uh, if I'm just giving a Cliff Notes version, is the Me Too, moment, Me Too movement is very important. Thank you, Gringo Mex, for the 420. I knew it. Pedro Bueno. Ya es hora. Thank you uh, for the 420. And by the way, as a reminder, uh, I'm going to say it a little bit less this time because we have important news. We're almost at 9,000 on the GoFundMe. Almost at 9,000 from 152 people. Uh, Ty and I are going to be getting back on the road uh, pretty damn soon. So we'd love to get to 9,000 by the end of this live stream. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone contributing. Uh, I'll put the link here in the chat and I'll put it in the description box too. Uh, get us to 9,000, maybe 10,000 by the end of this. Who the hell knows? But... Susan Collins spoke about how the Me Too moment, the Me Too movement is very important, that she thinks we should believe women. She said she does believe that Christine Ford was a victim of uh, sexual assault at one point in her life. And she said that she uh, simply does not see the evidence from the FBI in, uh, investigation to suggest that she was a victim of sexual assault from or at the hands of Brett Kavanaugh. She also used the word, she also used the term fairness, that she cannot abandon, she cannot abandon um, the, uh, the principle of innocent till proven guilty, and she cannot 
abandon the principle of fair note, fair fairness, citing that based on the FBI investigation and press the share button, get this out on Facebook, on Periscope, on YouTube, based on the FBI investigation, um, there was nothing in there that corroborated uh, Miss Ford or Miss Ramirez's allegation. And that's when I tweeted, Susan Collins is full of shit. I didn't actually tweet that, but she is full of shit. And I'll tell you why. Because you cannot talk about... I actually agree that Kavanaugh or anyone, whether it's a man or a woman, most of, most of the people being accused are obviously men. Men are entitled to, and everyone is entitled to being innocent until proven guilty. Obviously, this was not a criminal case. But even without a criminal case, you should be presumed as innocent until proven guilty. There should not be a mob mentality. So women have the right to protest, and they should be protesting because uh, sexual assault, harassment, misconduct has been swept under the rug for decades, maybe longer than decades. But we should not attack in the principle of innocence still proven guilty. The problem with that is this FBI investigation did not do or did not interview everyone they should have interviewed and needed to interview to decide if he was guilty of these charges or innocent of these charges. So when Senator Collins talks about fairness, well, it's not fair to Christine Ford, who it took a lot of courage. She originally did not want to come out, if you remember. It takes a lot of courage to do that. So it's not fair to her that dozens of people not just her, but Deborah Ramirez, that dozens of people who said they could corroborate, they can corroborate the accusations made by Ford and Ramirez, they were not contacted by the FBI. And I did a video on this yesterday. The FBI was provided seven days for this investigation, seven days for this investigation. So you're telling me you ended it in five days. So you're telling me you interviewed every single person that said we might have some information that could be helpful, whether to corroborate it or knock it down? No. So Susan Collins, citing the FBI report, was basically reading a, a fake investigation. They only spoke with nine to ten people, I believe. They did not even speak to Christine Ford or Brett Kavanaugh. The FBI would be a lot better than... Uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee in questioning Brett Kavanaugh or Christine Ford to see if there were inconsistencies in their story. Don't you think? So when I hear Susan Collins talking about we need to, uh, we cannot abandon the presumption of innocence. If we do abandon the presumption of innocence, then we are setting up a very, very dangerous process for the future uh, nominees that are nominated to the Supreme Court. Two things could exist at once. I agree with her that we should not abandon the presumption of innocence. But you cannot actually, fairly, you cannot decide whether these accusations have credence and are true or if the accusations are not true without doing a full and thorough investigation, which they did not. You can't tell me if there are reports say dozens of people were contacting unsolicited people who know Deborah Ramirez or Christine Ford were contacting unsolicited to the FBI and people that knew Brett Kavanaugh. Unsolicited. If you don't speak with them, you don't, I don't want to hear about fairness because it's not fair to the accusers. You did not, there was not a thorough investigation into this. And I think Susan Collins essentially said, listen, I'm a Republican. I'm not going to be the vote that deprives the Republican Party of a 5-4 majority on the Supreme Court, possibly for decades. So this is the investigation in front of me. Oh, well, they didn't talk to dozens of people who said they might have information. Oh, well. And Collins put it at 50. So it could have been a 50-50 tie if Democrat Joe Manchin 
did not decide to vote for Brett Kavanaugh. But, as I tweeted earlier in the day, Joe Manchin doesn't believe in doing what's right or wrong. He believes in doing what will get him reelected. Virginia is the most popular state in the country as far as popularity for President Trump. And Joe Manchin's up for re-election. Here is Joe Manchin's statement on why he is voting. The only Democrat, the only Democrat to vote for Brett Kavanaugh. From the start of this process, I promised my constituents that I would look seriously at Judge Kavanaugh's record and cast my vote based on the facts I, I have before me and what is best for West Virginia. I met with the nominee for over two hours, attended his hearings, spoke with constitutional experts, and heard from thousands of West Virginians. I have reservations about this vote given the serious accusations against Judge Kavanaugh and the temperament he displayed in the hearing. And my heart goes out to anyone who has experienced any type of sexual assault in their life. However, based on all the information I have available to me, including the recently completed FBI report, I have found Judge Kavanaugh to be a qualified jurist who will follow the Constitution and determine cases based on the legal findings before him. I do hope that Judge Kavanaugh will not allow the partisan nature this process took to follow him onto the court. With respect to any cases that may come before him impacting the 800,000 West Virginians with pre-existing conditions, Judge Kavanaugh assured me personally that he would consider the human impacts and approach any decision with surgical precision to avoid unintended consequences. That is why I voted to confirm Judge Kavanaugh's nomination to serve in the Supreme Court. I believe he will rule in a manner that is consistent with the Constitution. That is, quote unquote, Democrat. Democrat Joe Manchin. And by the way, Democratic leader Chuck Schumer, if you want to call him a leader, has basically said, I'm not going to punish. I'm not going to punish any of my people. I'm not going to punish any of my people who decide to vote for Brett Kavanaugh. Thank you, Desi Mergy. Five bucks. What is the procedure necessary to introduce term limits for Supreme Court judges? Why is it no term limits in the first place? Because we live in an oligarchy. That's why. And the Constitution gave them permanent life sentences. So who is more of the coward, Joe Manchin or Susan Collins? I think they're both cowards. I think they're both cowards. And the bottom line is this, if the FBI did a investigation for seven days, which they were given, seven days, but they wrapped it up in five. And at the end of those seven days, they simply said, this is the time we were allotted. We, we weren't able to speak with every single person that said they had information because we only had seven days, that would be one thing. Well, they did it in five days while, while they did it in five days, while the president and his White House that approved it were going around the country mocking a sexual assault uh, victim, Christine Ford, and basically saying Kavanaugh should be nominated. 